Hello, and thank you for joining us for Mark's Madness. He's Mark Shine. I'm Matt Finkel. Mark, it's the final week of the boys' basketball regular seasons, which means the tournament is about a week away. We've crowned some league champs in the process, including at Lima Senior. They are the track champs making history as the first Spartans team to claim a team track title. They beat Whitmer and Central Catholic over the weekend, now 20-0 overall. 13-0 in the league. Well, Matt, they struggled a little bit with Whitmer on the road. Finally got it going in the fourth quarter. Scored a lot of points this weekend. Put up 82 and 85 this weekend. A bigger win against Toledo Central Catholic. Really got it going there. They need to get Jalen Thomas healthy. He's got an injury of some type. Upshaw missed uh, with an injury, illness of some type. Need to get him back too. But heading into the tournament, Spartans certainly in good shape. Toledo Central Catholic went undefeated a year ago. The Spartans go undefeated this year, so back-to-back -back undefeated in the crown for the championship crown if the Spartans could beat Oregon Clay this week. Yeah, Lima Senior has two games left. Yep. They came in as the favorite. There are a lot of hype surrounding them this year, yep. and they've done they've lived up to it. They've done what they needed to do. There's something to be said for that, right? Really much so. And of course, they backloaded their schedule. They have a good Mansfield uh, senior team coming in on Saturday as well. Mansfield senior plays Lexington for the league championship in the Ohio Cardinal Conference on Friday night. So they've got a big challenge themselves and come over to play Lima Senior in what has been a good matchup when the Spartans play Mansfield Senior the last several years. So Lima Senior finishes as number two in the final Division I poll of the season. Yep. How about the other team in Lima, LCC? They finish as number one in the Division Three poll, and they have no league, of course, right. but they did beat Salina this weekend. They're now 19-1 and one overall. That's a Salina team that's improving some. We can talk about them a little bit when we get to the Western Buckeye League, but certainly doing what they wanted to do. Uh, Trey Cobbs, of course, has led them in scoring, but they've just got six guys that are really playing well for them right now. They had three other players in double figures besides Cobbs on uh, the game against uh, Salina the other night, so things are really going well right now for Coach Kill's team. T-Birds play Spencerville and yep. Defiance this weekend, two games you can see on WOSN. That should be a good test before the T-Birds open tournament play. Well, I think that's a really good challenge for all three of those teams, the Central, Central Catholic matching up with Spencerville. That could be a district tournament game a little bit later on, and then play Defiance on the road. Of course, Defiance is going to win the Western Buckeye League, a very solid team, and I think it just prepares all three of those teams for, for league play uh, heading into the tournament. Let's talk about the Western Buckeye League next. So you mentioned Defiance there. They've got at least a share after a 20-point win over Van Wert. Bulldogs are 17-3, and 8-0 in the Western Buckeye League, and they can clinch the outright, of course, with a victory this weekend. That's right. Of course, they're, they're glad to get Cam Singleton back. That makes a big difference for them. They do go to Shawnee, who struggled a little bit last weekend with Salina, but they certainly have um, a good chance, for I think, for Defiance to go on the road, get a win there, and then, of course, that game at home with Lima Central Catholic. Big weekend matchup for them as well, heading into the tournament next week. OG is the only team who can gain a share with the Bulldogs. They beat Elida on Friday, but the Titans would have to get a win this weekend and have Defiance lose, of course. Yeah, and you would guess that that's not going to happen. Uh, Shawnee, of course, will be a pretty good matchup, especially at home for Defiance, but with everything on the line, getting Singleton back, you would have to feel pretty good if you're Defiance going into this. OG, with the season they've had, they're going to be content to be probably second in the conference and head into the tournament where they're going to be some real challenges. Elsewhere in the league, Salina beat Shawnee by two. Bath beat Kenton and Wapak beat St. Mary's. Again, these teams all in the same district, yep. so they're going to face, some of them are going to face each other again. But how about Upper Sandusky also oh in goodness. this district? Yeah. Big weekend. Upper Sandusky, of course, is undefeated. They had a guy by the name of Wes Vent this weekend, and according to everything I read about him, he had 37 points in a win against Winford. He was 9 for 9 from the three-point line. And Matt, I can't make nine layups in a row. If I've made nine threes, that ball's going to the basket about 20 times, not just nine, Shoot but a great night. That, yeah. I'm going to make a whole lot more shots than I at least attempt to, but he's certainly a scoring threat for an undefeated basketball team that will come over. They'll match up with OG in the, uh, in the district semifinals should it get that far for both teams. So let me put your prediction hat on. Yep. Do you think it's going to be OG defiance in the district final, or will Upper have something to say about that? Well, the thing is we don't ever know about what Upper Sandusky brings in because they don't play anybody in our particular area. They play a a schedule that's predominantly uh, smaller teams, so they've got a little bit of an advantage there in their North Central Coach Conference. So we'll see what happens with them, but you got to think that OG, as tournament tests as they are, playing locally as they do so often. I'm going to go with, a, with an all WBL final in that. We'll have to wait and see as we get into a little bit farther, see who's healthy, who's injured, and so on. But right now, I like the Titans. Yeah, looking forward to see how that one plays out. How about the NWC now? That's where Lincoln View yep. is atop the league, and they clinched last week, getting the win over Ada, a close two-point victory. They're the NWC champs. They also finished number one in the final Division IV poll. They do. They get a chance to go to Paulding to go undefeated in the conference play. Last time a team went undefeated in the conference was Crestview a couple of years ago. That turned out pretty well for them. So yes. we'll see how Lincoln View does as well. 
They've done it in the typical way. They continue to defend. It was a, what, 49, 47 over Ada, much closer, I think, than some people would have thought, but they continue to defend well and get balanced scoring. You know, for having only one win in the conference, Ada will play it pretty tough. They do, and that, that, we've talked about how good the NWC has been all year long. Groves had a good year. Bluffton's had a good year. They've had a lot of good non-conference games. And Pauley's going to come in at 10-10. and 10. They're 3-4 and four in conference play. So it has been a good year for the Northwest Conference. Spencerville beat Jefferson pretty easily by 30. Did that score surprise you? Yeah, the, the depth of the score certainly did. And I think what's happened, if you look what happened, Bailey Croft this week had 17 points in one game, 18 in the other. If they get a consistent interior play, a double-figure scorer out of him, as good as everybody else has been on the perimeter and around him, that really bodes well for them heading into the tournament when he's going to get points like that. And a potential postseason preview if it all sh it could shake out that way. You know, you have Wayne Trace, Allen East, and playing the winner of that one, Jefferson. Meanwhile, Spencer would have to beat Marion Local. Then those two could meet again yeah. in the district semifinal. Maybe. We will Maybe. see yeah. how it plays out. A lot, lot to be played. Of course, Trey Smith didn't score as well this weekend as he had over the past few weeks. We hope that that's not an injury situation, just one of the anomalies that happened during the course of the season. I'm sure Coach Smith wants his son to get it going. Routing out the rest of the league games in the Northwest Conference, it was Crestview over Allen East and Grove over Bluffton 48-46 in OT. Yep. Good one on Friday night. All right, let's talk about the Mac now. Versailles, yep. the outright champs, 16-5 and overall, 8-1. and They beat Minster. That was a big game to secure the outright title. And, and each week, Versailles was tested. Remember, they were down for a little. It looked like Coldwater was in control. Fort Recovery had a say, but it ends up with the Tigers on top. It did. You know, we kind of picked it that way before the season began. In the middle part of the season, we weren't so sure about that. Versailles certainly has got it going, and now they're going to head into the tournament this week. They do things a little bit differently down south. They start the week earlier. The other thing that's different about down south, in particular Versailles, the seeded teams like to play. They jump in right away yeah. and play, whereas in the northwest part, we tend to think of, let's take a bye if we're the seeded team, but not down there. So they're going to play right away in the tournament will of the Versailles Tigers. Yeah, Versailles regular season is done. So yes. they're totally focused on the postseason. They've got their third MAC title. St. Henry beat Fort Recovery by 11. Coldwater over New Knoxville. Marion Local beat Parkway, then lost to Rushi on Saturday. And Delphi St. John's beat New Bremen, then lost to Bath right. in overtime on Saturday. What's your take on the rest of this conference and where they might end up in the postseason? Well, how about St. Henry? Because Mitchell Stomas had this great year. He doesn't make a field goal the other night. He has seven points all from the free throw line. There's something that would be very rare as we're looking at things that have happened in the conference play, but they got 18 from Layfeld, they got 12 from Neekamp, they got 11 from Sweeterman. They made nine three-point field goals, and they still beat a good Fort Recovery team without Stalman scoring points. I think that bodes well for them going into the tournament. That's a good little underrated rivalry, right? St. Henry yeah. Fort Recovery. They're closer than people realize, I think, and I, both student sections really came out yep. for that game, and it was an exciting one that we had on WSN. Well, with the, the success of Fort Recovery basketball over the last several years, they've been very good with guys named Colleague and so on. And of course, St. Henry has always been kind of the standard for basketball in that particular area, so it has turned into a good rivalry. Putnam County League is up next, and Kaleida beats Continental on Friday, 54-47. And then Miller City beats Grove on Saturday, yeah. so it's Kaleida who claims the outright Putnam County League title. Yeah, you know, how about Kaleida this year? If you look at what they did just in conference play, the, their loss was to, uh, to Lipsick, I think. And what happened in there is they gave up 47 points or less to everybody except Lipsick. Collide are very patient offensively. They don't turn the basketball over. That makes them very solid at the defensive end, and they win the league. 20th PCL title <laughs> in 42 years that? for Dick Cordacrax. He's yeah. a legend. Hall of Famer. How about that? You just, you just load him up. Every other year he's going to win a league championship, and obviously they've had some great years there. He had some good years at Ottawa before then. He can really coach the game. He's got good players. He knows how to manage them. Of course, he's got a lot of help from his assistants as well right now down at Kaleida, so good, good job for them. Lipsick beats Ottoville and Fort Jennings beats Pandora Gilboa elsewhere in the PCL. But I want to talk about Lipsick because they also play right. in the Blanchard Valley Conference and they're competing for the league title there. This one is not decided yet. The Vikings beat Van Buren and Ottoville. They've now won 10 in a row. So it's Lipsick and Liberty Bend 9 and 1 both in the BBC. Well, what's happened with Lipsick? They won 10 in a row, and in that spell, Brown has averaged just under 17 points a game at 16.9. And also during that spell, they've had six different players score double figures at least once. So they get a lot of points out of Brown, a very consistent 16, 17, 18 points per game. And then they get somebody else fill in, or a couple of somebody else's fill in, also get in double figures, and that's why they're succeeding right now. So Liberty Benton held serve. They beat Hopewell yeah. Loudon. They did lose to Bowling Green on Saturday, but that's non-league. So LB and Lipsick each have one league game left. It's Lipsick taking on Hopewell Loudon, and Liberty Benton plays Pandora Gilboa. Think we're going to have a share? Yeah, I would think so. They're both going to be favored going into this weekend. Obviously, the upsets could occur along the way, but yes, they will be favored this weekend and share the conference crown.
And just don't forget about Arlington because if they do both lose, Arlington can yep. get in there on the share. They're eight and two in the league after beating Macomb by ten. The Red Devils have won five in a row. Arlington is the guy that pinned the loss on Liberty Benton by seven, I think, back in the middle part of the season. So, you know, there's your chance for Arlington to have a good season as well. I think they, Jason from Williams Club has kind of snuck up on some people how well they played. Moving on now to the Green Meadows Conference, and that's where we can talk about Wayne Trace, yep. who clinched a share of the title, finishing 6-1 and one in the league. They split the title with Ayersville, who's having a really nice season. And remember that we talked about that Ayersville-Wayne Trace game. Wayne Trace got out to the huge first quarter. Ayersville rallied, got the win, and that, that's Wayne Trace's only loss in the league. So Wayne Trace and Ayersville share the title. But I want to talk about Saturday's game between right. Wayne Trace and Grandview Heights in the Steve Hall Memorial game. And Mark, why don't you take us through on your play breakdown and show us this game goes to overtime. We're going to show you towards the end of regulation how the Raiders were able to get it done. Well, really well played basketball game. A lot of points on the board here. We're going to go to overtime. Watch Ethan Linder right here. His team is down three. We're getting late in the basketball game. He does a fade, gets a screen, and buries a three to, to tie it up at that particular point. He's been doing this for three years now, and he's just a junior. Watch the screen he gets and the well-timed pass right there. Defender makes a mistake going under the screen, allows him to rise up and bury that three right there. And then we're going to get a, a, a steal right here. The ball is tipped by Vest. Linder comes up with it. The defender will get here late. That's a charge call or a block call. Very good call by the official. And of course, you can see he does it emphatically. Um, here he comes right here. Defender gets there late. And with that, the ball goes off the basket into the basket. But of course, uh, he misses the free throw here. So now as we're down to is Grandview Heights. Watch this left-handed bounce pass through traffic. The catch and score. That's going to put the game into overtime. And that was a really nice left-handed bounce pass. But Linder's going to get a basket. This time he fades to the opposite side of the court. And this time when his defender comes out to play him, he recognizes he has baseline, goes up strong with the right hand. And hang time good enough to get the score. And that's going to propel Wayne Trace on. Here we're going to get another look at it once again. Here's his jab, step, and go. Gets baseline, helps a little bit late, hangs long enough to get it up with the right hand, and it goes for Ethan Linder, and they go into overtime. They win in overtime. They win in overtime. A big night for Ethan and a very emotional evening all around because Steve Hall had such an impact on both of those communities. Yep. And it was great to see them come together. That's a long trip from Grandview Heights area, Columbus area, but a, a definitely worth it to, to honor Steve Hall. Well, it was an honor for him, of course. That was a good part of the basketball game. Then you have this huge crowd there and a great game to entertain them with. It was a really solid weekend in all respects. And congratulations for Wayne Trace for putting that together. Now, Wayne Trace has one more game left yep. to tune up against Ottoville before they start the tournament for Grandview. View Heights. That was their regular season finale. All right, Mark, let's finish with some Shelby County League talk. Rushi, they win the outright title. They're 10 and 2 in the league, beating Botkins. Anna beats Jackson Center. So that's why Rushi gets well, the outright title. Mark Miller and I were there. That was about as strange a basketball game as you have. Anna does not score in the first quarter. Anna doesn't score in the first four minutes and 14 seconds of the second quarter. It's 13 to nothing Jackson Center, and we played over 12 minutes of basketball. Anna goes on a great run at the end of the half to get it back in the basketball game. They end up winning 36-31. It was a strange, strange basketball game to think that you don't score for 12 minutes plus and you still win the basketball yeah, game. Yeah, very interesting that way. Well, congrats to Rushi, though, for claiming the outright league title. That was right. one that, you know, they started playing league games way before everybody else, and we were wondering how it was going to play out. Right. Well, it's the Raiders who come out on top. They really did. It's a good win for them. We've talked all year long about the seniors who graduated and the good job they've done with under playing for their new basketball coach there. And I really congratulate the Anna Rockets for going on the road and getting that win after being in such adversity early. Congratulations to them. That's three really good teams in that conference. Yeah, playing spoiler a little bit. How about that? All right, besides the tournament games coming up in the yep. Southwest District, what games are you looking forward to in our final weekend of the regular season? Well, I, first of all, I want to see Defiance and LCC, mostly because I get to call that game. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to see how those two teams match up in, in styles that are so opposite in contrasting and how they want to play the basketball game. Defiance will be slow, patient, methodical, defensive oriented. LCC will want to get up and go. Obviously, they defend, and that causes transition to get out and go because of the contrast contrast and styles and how good both those teams are. That's the game I'm really interested in. Looking forward to that one as well as LCC Spencerville, couple right. ranked teams. Spencerville finishing 13th in the final rankings. We'll have both of those games for you as we take a look at our rebroadcast schedule for this coming weekend. Wednesday at 7.30, Baldwin Wallace versus the ONU women live on WOSN. Then Wednesday at 9.30, Ada and Temple Christian boys basketball. How about Friday, 10.30, Fort Recovery and Marion Local as they close out the MAC schedule. And Friday at 10.44, WTLW following the sports report number one LCC against number 13 Spencerville. Saturday, busy day, 3 p.m. begins with Marietta versus the ONU men 
live on the West Ohio Sports Network. At 5.30, it'll be Defiance and Shawnee. And then at 7.30, we're going live. Number one LCC versus number seven Defiance with Mark Shine and Mark Miller on the call. If you miss it live at 7.30, it'll be replayed at 10.30 on WOSN. Then Saturday at 9 p.m., number one Lincoln View against Paulding as they close out the Northwest Conference schedule. Finally, Sunday at 7 p.m., it's some Division Three wrestling, the sectionals from Lima Central Catholic. So another busy rebroadcast schedule. Of course, you can always visit the website, WOSN.TV. Check out the rebroadcast schedule, including all replay times. Those are just the first airings. And thanks again, Mark. Yep. Great job, as always, for Mark's Madness. That does it for this week. We'll be back here next week.